Welcome to my KTM video playlist. Today we are going to see the length of an open belt drive and length of cross belt drive. And at last we will discuss about the important formula for the belt drive. So this is very useful for the numerical portion. So see carefully. Generally there are two cases. One is the length of open belt drive and second one is the length of cross belt drive. You know that this is the open belt drive arrangement and this is the cross belt drive arrangement. In both the cases, the length of the belt will be different. In this figure also you can see the length of open belt drive will always less than the length of cross belt drive. Let's say R1 will be the radius of the larger pulley and R2 will be the radius of the smaller pulley. In both the cases, X will be the distance between the center of these two pulleys and L that is the total length of belt in case of open belt drive and in case of cross belt drive. Now, in case of open belt drive, this is the formula for the length of belt. So, you have to remember this equation. Pi in bracket R1 plus R2 plus 2x plus in bracket R1 minus R2 whole square divided by x. So, this is the length of the belt for the open belt drive. And this one is the formula for the length of belt in case of cross belt drive. Here only the change is over here you can see. In case of open belt drive it will be R1 minus R2 whereas in case of cross belt drive it will be plus. And that simply you can remember. Here you can see length of open belt drive is always little bit less than cross belt drive. And so that it will be minus and it will be plus. Here, theta that is actually the contact angle and that is always at smaller pulley. So here this theta that is the contact angle that is equal to 180 minus 2 alpha. From this figure you can understand. The total angle is 180 minus 2 times alpha so that you will get the theta that is the contact angle in case of open belt drive. In case of cross belt drive here you can see this is the theta from here to here and that is equal to 180 plus 2 alpha. From this figure also you can understand. So very simple. In case of open belt drive contact angle will be less than the cross belt drive and so that it will be plus 2 alpha and here it will be minus 2 alpha. Next, if you want to find the alpha, then this is the equation. Alpha is equal to sine inverse in bracket R1 minus R2 upon X. And in case of cross belt drive, alpha is equal to sine inverse R1 plus R2 upon X. So again, you have to remember this equation. In case of open belt drive, this is the equation for the alpha. And this is the equation of the alpha for cross belt drive. So especially in numerical portion if the alpha is not given to you then you have to find the alpha from this equation then you can put the value of alpha over here so that you can find the theta that is the contact angle. Now you know that very important formula T1 upon T2 is equal to e raised to mu theta where T1 is the tight side tension, T2 is the slack side tension and the unit for the both tension is always in Newton. Mu is the coefficient of friction that is unitless. Theta is the contact angle or you can say the lap angle that is always in radian for this formula. So if the angle is in degree then you have to multiply degree with the pi by 180 so that you will get theta is in radian. Next, P is equal to T1 minus T2 into V. 
where P is the power transmitted capacity of the belt drive that is in watt always. T1 and T2 you know that tight side tension and slack side tension both will be in Newton. V is the velocity of the belt and that is always in meter per second. If you have not the velocity then you can find the velocity from this equation that is pi d1 n1 upon 60 or you can find from this also pi d2 n2 upon 60 where velocity is always in meter per second d1 is the diameter of the pulley that is in meter n1 is the speed of the pulley that is always in rpm You can find the velocity from this pulley also that is pi d2 n2 upon 60. So you can find the velocity from both this option. You will get the unique value of the belt speed. Next, maximum tension in the belt that is equal to sigma into b into t where t max is always in Newton because of it is maximum tension. Sigma is the stress in the belt and the unit is always Newton per mm square. B is the width of the belt that is also in mm. T is the thickness of the belt that is also in mm. Here B is actually the width of the belt and T is the thickness of the belt. So thickness is generally very small compared to width. So keep in mind over here the width is comparatively more than the thickness of the belt. From this figure you can realize it also. One more equation for the maximum tension that is T1 plus Tc where T1 is the tight side tension and Tc that is the centrifugal tension. Once again both are in Newton. Next, Tc that is equal to mv square where Tc is the centrifugal tension in Newton, m is the mass of the belt and v is the velocity of the belt. Again keep in mind the unit of the mass of the belt that is generally in kg and velocity that is in meter per second. In the next video, we will solve the problems by using this important different formula. So keep watching. Thanks my dear friends for watching this video. Press the like button to appreciate.